the Jews from Arab lands have become part of many different nations and cultures. Here in Britain, in particular, their stories aren't well known. They have their own communities. The Jews of Aden have a community, the Jews of Yemen have a community, the Jews of Bahrain have a community, the Jews of Iraq, the Jews of Egypt, the Jews of Morocco. The more that British Jews can understand that this is an integral part of the British Jewish story. Just as my grandparents came from Russian Poland, so my neighbor's grandparents came from Baghdad or Casablanca or Sana. And this story needs to be not just told, but needs to be recorded and needs to be available. I am an Iranian Jew born in Iran in Isfahan. My family is an Ottoman family, and uh, my parents themselves were both born in Egypt, but none of their parents were. Summer we used to go to sleep on the roof, so we had two sets of beds, one set in the room, and one set for the for the roof. And on the roof, every morning, the the maid goes and uh, cover the the bed because it's sunny, it's so hot, so the the beds were all covered. And then in the evening, uh, when after the sun sets, she goes to the roof, she opens all the bed, and, and it's so beautiful to sleep on the roof. It's so cool, so nice, and to look at the stars, it's really, I miss the, uh, sleeping on the roof. When I woke up, these very early years, my nanny used quickly to take me away so that I wouldn't wake my younger sister, who was a baby, uh, up, or the rest of the family, who lived in another sort of wing, um, and took me to my grandmother, because she woke up very early. And uh, she would be sitting on a balcony, which overlooked the Nile. Her servants, I think she was called Miriam, uh, would make her very strong, sweet, Turkish coffee, and uh, she would be smoking uh, ceaselessly these uh, scented Turkish uh, cigarettes, and she would pour some of the coffee on, a lit on the saucer and give it to me to lick. So I've always loved uh, that. And we would look, and I, my memory, uh, with the smell of the cigarette and the coffee, and looking... Uh, across uh, the Nile, because that was in front of us. And in the early morning of the dawn, there is a mist above it, where you can only see the palm trees. And this is my vision of uh, my early childhood, is to remember. I went to a, a school, Alliance Israelienne, in Baghdad, Laura Kaduri. Uh, I, stay, I made the primary school there. Then I went back to study in state school because I wanted to get into uh, University of uh, Medicine to have to become a pharmacist really because my granddad from my mother's side he was one of the first chemists who went to Istanbul with his brother and he opened his first pharmacy in Baghdad. Uh, I went uh, to the English school Cairo. Before that, I had gone to the Gezira Preparatory School in Zamalek. And uh, these were not Jewish schools. So uh, my friends were everything. 
I had uh, English friends who were themselves divided up between their numerous English Protestant religions. There were Catholics, um, there were Syrian Christians, there were Greek Catholics, there were two Chinese boys who claimed to have no religion. Uh, there was uh, a Russian girl, Yashina, who um, was uh, Russian Orthodox. Um, there were Muslims. Uh, and they were all my friends and they were all invited to my bar mitzvah. So we had, uh, we had a very cosmopolitan life because in Morocco you had uh, Italians, French, Portuguese, uh, English, uh, not all in the same uh, quantity, obviously, the French. Yes, the, as far as social activities in, in Iraq were very well advanced. Three clubs, one was the Zawra, the other one was the Laura Kaduri club, and the third one was the Rafidina club. In Baghdad, the only thing I remember, um, the Farhud. Uh, I was about 11 years old. Um, I still remember every single details about it because uh, we had to leave the house and we went uh, to stay with our aunt. And then they have got a very large house and uh, garden and uh, they were as rich and every uh, and lots of arabs came to they wanted to uh, uh, you know to kill the jews or uh, uh, but uh, their neighbor um, um, wouldn't let them pass with you know he had a revolver and he started to shoot and they went out they went away uh, we stayed there about uh, three, four days, and while we are there, you know, when the, those Arabs came to kill the Jews, to, uh, uh, we went, uh, we crossed the road to their friends, uh, Muslim friend, uh, friends, and they protected us. We stayed there three, four days, and then we everything was uh, quiet, and we went back home. The change really took place in 1947. It became a hostility towards the English first, uh, as Egypt wanted its independence. And then uh, this spread as a hostility against Europeans. And there were actually attacks on Europeans uh, and we were instructed that if uh, you uh, were caught in the streets by a riot or something, immediately say, I'm Greek, I'm Greek. Because <clears throat> the hostility towards the Greeks only came later. I uh, worked in Baghdad for 22 years. From the date I uh, finished my secondary school, because I couldn't get into College of Pharmacy because it was after the independence of Israel. And the minister in the Ministry of Health told my father, as well as the dean of the um, faculty of medicine at the time, they told him that we are not going to accept any Jew Tell your daughter and all other Jews that we, we have an order. We are not going to accept any Jew in university. After 1963, uh, things were bad. And they, the, uh, they stopped giving us uh, this, the passport. We were not allowed to leave after 1963 we were not allowed to leave the country. For 10 years, we couldn't leave the country. 
people started going illegally through the north and they go to Iran and from Iran they go to Israel. to passport office to get my passport and the, the officer in, uh, at the passport office told me that you are blacklisted, you cannot go. Apparently it was another David Aaron which ha have a problem and they blacklist him. The, the officer said, okay, I, come, I can guarantee that you are not the same person. We, he, he never knew me, he never saw me, he never, uh, honestly, it, I, I, even now I'm telling you, I, I, I'm still uh, uh, shivering that he could come like an angel, honestly. And um, I told him, uh, at the end he came and he guaranteed I'm not that, this, that David Aaron, I'm, this is another David Aaron. And they gave me my passport immediately. And I left the country after two days, and after three days, the war happened and all the border was closed. When we left, uh, as I told you, my husband was in prison the second time, the first time, all of us, and we didn't know if we will arrive safely or not, if, we, if they will let us leave. The day before we, uh, we left, we went, uh, we, we slept with friends, you know, very good friends. We took our suitcases and went there because we had to close the, the house, to, to give the house. And we slept there. And from there, a driver came and took us to the airport. Yeah, it was really, it was like a dream. I didn't feel that really we are not coming back. We left with him direct to London. My son was in the airport and I didn't know where he is. You know, I couldn't see him. Sorry. I saw him the last time. He was 14 years old. Now he is 23 years old. And, sorry. And my son, the other one, told me, oh, mom, he is there. So I saw him, you know, after he left at the age of 12, apart from he came for his bar mitzvah when he was 13, and then he left and uh, we couldn't see him. We left the country we, three months and we lost our nationality. And then we were stateless. Here we got uh, stateless, uh, stateless papers you know, from the Jewish agency that arranged for us. And then it took uh, a few years to apply because first of all, we have to, I don't know, stay here five years. And then we had to apply. And it took another year till we get, got it. So yeah, it was in the 80s, mid 80s that we got we were British. I am proud to be Moroccan. I'm proud to be having a British passport. I'm very proud to have a French, totally French education. And above all, I'm proud to be Jewish. Because to be Jewish, it's a hell of responsibility. Of course, home is sweet home, but we, we had half way of, we lived in Baghdad, but of course our home now is in England. Because we, to have bad experience from your own country, you wouldn't be able to think going back home. Definitely I'm not a British. But how can I deny that I'm an Iraqi? I didn't go there as an immigrant. I've been there for 3,000 years. I feel more at home in England now 
then certainly I did when I came. But this is not because I changed and became more British, but because Britain became more foreign. Don't be ever ashamed of your origin, whatever it is, humble, wealthy, what sort. You are part of a history. You are part of something, even infinitesimal. You are part of something which somebody else can learn from it.